What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another fun-filled episode of the Trial by Air Variety Show podcast, episode number 34. This is the potentially last episode of February. I might have some extra storage space to distribute out on, I'm not sure. But uh, as we creep into March, we've got something really special lined up. And uh, stick around after the interview to find out what it is. Today, we talk to psychedelic indie rock band from Dallas, Texas, Acid Carousel. And we listen to music off of their newest EP first. It's called Street Cowboys. And then we listen to one song as a closer from an ancient EP. It is called This is a Fucking treat for small kids i apologize parents teacher kids words aren't as powerful as uh the mainstream wants you to believe they are and without further ado everybody enjoy the show All right, man. How how is everybody? Everybody in? Fantastic. We need to rehearse, so we're uh, vibes are high right now. Yeah. How are you doing? Oh man, I'm great. I had a great day. It it got hot today, right? It's getting hotter. Yeah, it's a little warm today. (laughs) Where are you located right now? What's what am I looking at here? We are in right now at our house, uh, the Candy Mansion. Yep. We we live, uh, rehearse, uh, record, do uh, hang out. Yep, oh, wow. yep. The Candy Mansion. I love it. The Candy Mansion. <laughs> yeah. As long as you're not like luring little kids in and cooking them in an oven, that's it sounds like a cool place. Uh, <laughs> no, no, not at all. Well, that kind of there's no weird shit going on. Oh, I guess there's lots of oh, weird shit, but weird shit, but good weird shit. Yeah, right. Uh so uh yeah, I'm I'm breezing band camp and uh you're I always check out the new releases and your album popped up and um, it's awesome. And, and it's cool. Cause you guys are just like, a which, few one was it? which one did you see? Street uh, Cowboys? The first, well, I, I found street Cowboys. I actually listened to, this is a fucking treat. 
Um, yeah. Yeah. I like that one. And then uh, Street Cowboys, I, I, I ended up, uh, I think I, yeah, I bought both of them. But uh, Street Cowboys, I guess, is your most recent one. So. Yeah, that's the most recent one. Yeah, we have a bunch of things out here. So people are like, we heard your record. I'm like, which one? <laughs> yeah, man, they're great. I love it. I love the... Uh, Thank you very much. Definitely love the vibes. I, I, I kind of breeze through some of your, uh, you know, the the info, uh, air quotes, on your uh, band camp there. And, um, <laughs> you know, there's <laughs> some pretty goofy stuff in there uh, that I, I kind of want you to explain. <laughs> Where did you guys... Uh, what made you pick that reference out of everything in the of that uh, dig documentary? So what we were doing with that when we were with the uh, Ian, our bass player, like, yeah. who was helping us record that, uh, we were thinking about putting a sample in there because I we all, I looked yeah. at it and that and every, all of us like yeah. that. and uh, we, we just watched was, dig yeah we <laughs> just watched dig like the the week before again I was yeah rewatch so, gotta do it regularly yeah really and so cool. I was like Ian put that in and make it sound like we're watching it on TV and then. Yeah. <laughs> in the background and so i think he did a pretty good job it sounds pretty cool so we debated about a few different uh lines from it because we, we thought about the one like let the kids dig this yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. there are definitely a lot to choose from in that movie that between oh, yeah. like the fighting and everything it just kind of shows you how unhinged he is like that was just such a great a great sample so kudos yeah. to that oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah definitely kind of uh you know you're like all right yep I know what playing field we're on right now, right? Going <laughs> within 10 seconds of turning the, <laughs> the album on. <laughs> yeah, they, oh, it's this attitude. Yeah. And in uh, Captain Marigold, the cartoon man kills his fans. <laughs> what is this uh, a reference to? Is this something that exists or is this fiction? Is this no, some... this is, I don't know. Captain Marigold is just like a fake character. We make up characters all the time in our songs. So it's like yeah. some that are reoccurring, like Dr. Space. Which yeah. is from, he's coming back. But Captain Marigold was my idea of like a guy like Captain Kangaroo who has like a, also also the South Park the Russell Crowe sailing around the world. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was like cartoon man. He has like a kids show, and then these kids win. He has like a boat. And he's like some kind of captain. These kids win a contest to go uh, uh, like on the boat with him, and they just want to they want to please Captain Marigold. Then he like turns into this sick bastard and. Ends up killing them all. Bastard. Yeah, and it's just kind of about like the whole that, which is like a silly joke thing about this cartoon that he kills all these children, like, which is totally made up. But the, I guess the real part of that song is like when people will like do anything for their like heroes or like celebrities, people they see on TV. Yeah, <laughs> and some of them like I guess the Charles Manson or like cults and everything. Like people yeah. actually like kill themselves. Stupid! Like if someone convinces you to do that, you must not be that smart, man. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's it's so much deeper than that. Like when you break down the psychology, I mean, some of these, yeah. some so many people are just clinging to some sort of hope, and if it's yeah. not if it's not a political agenda, it's a religious agenda, you know, or yeah. or it's money, right? I've heard a thing like about people talking about like copycat suicides of Kurt Cobain and people oh, like yeah, that, that's so like. They're like, oh, this person I love and made these records that I like killed himself. And must I must know too. Like, you gotta be able to take meaning from music. Everyone applies it differently. You can't take it literally, I guess. Yeah. You can't take. We don't take anything too seriously. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I find the fun in, in things, but also know what's going on. I guess. That's a good kind of uh, segue into what I wanted to ask next. Explain to me what looks like a hodgepodge of just somebody's backyard. Actually, if you look closer, it looks very orchestrated. Ex <laughs> break, break down the photo on the front of your album cover. <laughs> it, it, it's exactly both of those things. You exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so it is our backyard, which is a hodgepodge of the shit we find. Literally, yeah. like we just we just oh, find things on the street, bring yeah, them back exactly. there, and we have like the flags, and we have things we just spray paint on. We'll find things on the road. Yeah. But then we were like, for the photo, we had our friend Annie uh, Nelson, who's one of our best friends in the whole world, takes mm -hmm. most of our photos, like uh, for all the records and live and stuff. So she kind of was like, "All right, we'll put." She like placed us all. Yeah. I was like, let's put these things here. And we like grabbed just some things, put up the Texas flag and things like that. <laughs> but yeah, all that stuff is just things from our backyard. There's obviously uh, somebody, you know, maybe I, I, I used to do this too. I, I, I wasn't sober when I did it, but I definitely stole a few roadside warning caution signs. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We, uh, we have a nice. 
best cone collection. I oh, see that. <laughs> we've got we've got all sorts. We've got a Houston cone. We got a, I, I brought a cone back from Houston. Where I'm from. Uh, we got cones from everywhere. We've got a valet man. cone. We got va Do we, yeah, our thing is collecting like special cones. We took the cone from House of God, which is a venue in Denton. Can we just got <laughs> cones from anywhere. Anywhere I did. Yeah, whatever the opportunity presents itself. Yeah. What I love about this whole thing is that. It, you didn't bother. You didn't bother to clean anything, but you did. <laughs> you did care to like rearrange stuff, you know, which I love. There's yeah, like yeah. like empty champagne bottles and like a nag nagachampa, yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, it's, it's, and like a two yeah, by four fun. right in the middle of the picture. Like this is yeah, that's, that's, yeah. that's good. That's firewood. We we burned that up. Yeah, oh, okay. yeah. So, you know, you can never judge a book by its cover, but I, I can say that I definitely knew what I was getting myself into when I pushed play <laughs> in the stream. <laughs> you know, I love it because it's it's natural. I mean, I, I know it's staged, but it looks so natural. Like I can tell that that's you guys and uh, that you're not taking it seriously. Um, but the music, <laughs> it, the music's put together like you, you guys take it very seriously. It's, it's, See, it sounds great. Yeah, but that's like cool. photos and like music videos, that's just pageantry. Like, yeah, have just... fun with it. Like, there's nothing I hate more or just think is so much funnier than like a photo of someone just like being so deep and like <laughs> in the universe. Or music videos when people are up on they're up <laughs> on the mountain, all the winds like, oh, blowing yeah. on them, and then like, an eagle comes and like kisses them on the face. <laughs> that sounds like a creed movie. <laughs> <laughs> so that's it. I I just face. think that's so funny. Like, this is having like. <laughs> Our favorite thing to do is like if you see us play live, we're having fun up oh, there. We're dude. all smiling, just like That's, goofing yeah. off. Like this is us letting our yayas out. Our yayas. Hey, from the new EP, this is the song Captain Marigold. Captain, he wants a 
Uh, how long have you guys been playing together? Do you guys look very young? Uh, yeah, well, yeah, well I, young, John and I have been playing together for a really long time, but yeah. we met when we were, I guess I was 13 and you were 16, 16 or something like yeah. that. Yeah, you were just starting driving. <laughs> and we met, we got kind of put together in an old group at a music school called Sound Sounds we were going to. And, like, the teachers were like, yo, be good together. And I was on drums originally. And then we just kind of went through a few, like, three different bands over the course of whatever years, a bunch of gigs touring. But then we were just like, we just like each other, and we like the same kind of music. And we weren't just in bands. We didn't weren't want to make that kind of music. So we were like, let's just do this together. Yeah. And he, well, he yeah. started, tell you started the project, Ask Carousel. Yeah, I came up the name. That was, uh, that was just me releasing, like, sh- shit that I recorded at, at, at my house on this little 8-track recorder that I have. And I was like, fuck it, I want to see, you know, see if people like this. Yeah. <laughs> or, you put or out if the, I should never do this. Put out a SoundCloud single. A SoundCloud single. Yeah, and I heard it on SoundCloud, so I was like, that's my boy, that's John, I got this. <laughs> and I, I just listened to it, and I was like, oh shit, it's the 60s like shit. I, I love this shit, it grows it. I'm I'm in your band now. <laughs> yeah, I'm, like, I'm like I'm I'm playing bass for you now. No, yeah. it's just, it's commented on something I think. It yeah, was it was just a Facebook call. I'm like I'm your bass player, and then we started just doing that jam. And then Fielder, our drummer, was just he met in the dorms. I think. Yeah. At UNT. That was just like that's a drummer we know. That's the only drummer we really know. He was a CNC kid. Yeah, he had good gear. <laughs> that's what the only re- he had good gear because. Usually, I'm a drummer myself, and I was not playing drums in this band, and especially when I'm running myself, I'm like, I just want to try to find a drummer who plays like me. So I had never even seen him play, but he just said he had good gear, and I was like, all right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we'll see how it works. And then eventually, yeah, I started, I like, I had all the songs for my bedroom shit, too, and then it's the same kind of stuff, so we were like, let's just do this together. So then I switched to guitar as well, and we got our old buddy Skinny playing bass. And then we started doing it as a four piece, like gig and regular. Us two on guitar, and then Skinny and Fielder. And I guess that started almost two years ago. It was around. It was like South by Week, twenty sixteen. Yeah, yeah, something like that. So I guess the recording end of the band started in the summer of twenty fifteen, and then the yeah. band started in spring of twenty sixteen. From there on, we just started playing a bunch of shows and then just adding more members and subtracting. Yeah. just different people but the record actually, yeah John and I just it's like all the recordings of John and I songs in, in the studio it's pretty much just us Yeah. and then whoever we got the, we found this dude in math class and yeah I, I actually I'm the newest addition yeah, I, newest I met addition. Gus in math class last semester in August I had just moved from Houston so I didn't know anybody and I like I don't know I met this dude in math class and it was, it was like the perfect fit it was like exactly what I was doing too so yeah. <laughs> it's just so funny man it just everything came together <laughs> That's awesome, man. It just seems like everything's very organic. That's that's awesome, dude. You guys are like soulmates. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. No, it's just fans, <laughs> people we've known forever just met out of convenience. Yeah, yeah. So it's like the world just kind of like I guess yeah. Fielder, we met the drummer was just uh, uh, like lived down the dorms from Don or from John. <laughs> from, <Dawn. laughs> from John Skinny, I had known. I'd known Ian since before I even knew John, and we all went to the same music school together. So he were, we were always just around playing in different bands. And he was in a band with one of our... We saw him a lot. Uh, and then Lucas met math yeah, class, and our keyboardist, Drew, uh, was just our friend Steve Nash, who was playing guitar for us at the time. It was just his friend, and then uh, it was his record release show, and Drew and I were both not 21 at the time. <laughs> so we were both just stuck outside until the set, because we were playing, but so we had to wait outside, so we just kind of hung around, and I was like, you play keyboards? And he's like, yeah. <laughs> and I like, was looking at him, and I'm like, what kind of music you like? <laughs> so we just kind of the same stuff, I'm like, you can come, come play keyboards with us. <laughs> and then he did. Yeah. So it's just, you know, you just we just find people. Then Lucas was literally in my yeah, math class. I was like, so oh, you play guitar? Come over to our house. And we jammed, and we're like, all right, you work. You're hired. <laughs> it sounds like like uh fifty percent situational and fifty percent cosmic. Maybe even sixty cosmic, forty situational. <clears throat> yeah, I don't know. Five percent aesthetical. Yeah. It's like, oh, you got. Only a little bit of that feels forced. That's all I got. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just joking. 
it, it's funny that a, you know a psych man is actually uh you know cosmically brought together that's like how it should work you know it's like uh and when exactly. you, you know, when yeah. you're dabbling on the dark side a little bit, you kind of like have all those messages and that information that you know. Once you sleep, you lose it, and and then it's like you find yeah. your band. It's like you you fucking knew that was gonna happen at some point. Like yeah, I feel like any like people who are like looking for the certain numbers and stuff. That's yeah. like it's all forced, and you're like, I've got these people because they have my aesthetic. I saw them out. Like nice. if you're brought together, you're just meant to be together. Exactly. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Like, even with John, who, like, is my best friend in the whole fucking world, I've been riding music with since I was 13. We were put together not because we wanted to be, just because our teacher, Mark, was like, y'all be good together. Y'all like the same music. <laughs> they put us in a room together. We didn't even talk. We just started playing. Before we, that's, yeah, that's, uh, we, we, wrote, we wrote a song before we had a combination. Yeah. <laughs> so I you... thought it was the same thing. Yeah. For like the first week of that band. <laughs> so John, you came up with the name. Uh, yeah. Where did that come from? Um, it's funny that you mentioned Be uh, Brian Jonestown earlier because uh, uh, Carousel comes from the EP "If I Love You" by Brian Jonestown Massacre. That's one of the songs on side B. And Acid was a uh, just the just the word Acid was a uh, Anton side project in like the early '90s, I think. Uh, and so I was like, those two words sound cool together. Yeah. Carousel, that word you just see every like since I started that. That's see, just a good word. I see it is. you see it everywhere, and it pops out. I just like, I like yeah. Carousel. Uh, everyone wants to go around. It's a mm -hmm. circle. <laughs> <laughs> you know, kaleidoscope. You can't get lost. That's good you know, it's a comfortable feeling. <laughs> you can't get lost. Oh, so many syllables. <clears throat> good ones. All right, let's take a little breather. Listen to another track off of the Street Cowboys EP, which is available on Bandcamp, by the way. You can stream it other places, but you should buy it from there so you can support them, right? That's really fun. And say that we sent you as well when you buy it. Uh, this is a track off of that EP. It's the second track. It's called Summer Girls. Swimming in pools, making. 
I was gonna ask uh, so long ago, what what bands w- now that are touring now that that you guys really look up to that um, you could see yourself playing with in a few years once you earn some some credibility and uh, you know get some notoriety under uh, your belt. Well, definitely. Well, ones we have, have played with that are going with like the Braves, we're just the people, yeah. and we played with all the laws too. Uh, yeah. Both of those bands were like people doing like the same kind of thing we wanted. Different. They got the California psych and. We got the Texas, Texas thing. I guess some Texas band. We played with Holy Wave who, a few times, and they're amazing Talking people. Definitely want to play with Night Beats, Night Beats. and uh, Black Angels. <laughs> the thing about the Night Beats is they've become good friends of mine, at least. Uh, two of them, because they lived in Dallas, and I just run into them at bars all the time. And like shows, because we'd be at the same shows. We just started talking to each other all the time. And then every time we see each other, we just be like, hey. <laughs> so we never played with them, but uh, no, nice to have Black Angel, yeah. Ty Siegel, and those are definitely people. Because those are people that just keep putting out music, too, at like a constant pace and playing shows and yeah. touring constantly. And they're, it's all awesome. That's what we just want to do. Yeah. Like, it out we love the whole idea of putting out like two, three records a year. That's what we're trying to do this year, but at least three. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you're doing it right. I mean, you're living in your space, you know? I mean, you can wake up with an idea, put it down, and, you know, by lunchtime, yeah. develop it. Yeah. Yeah, and we finally got our friend um, Brack Cantrell, who we've been recording our, our rock op with right now. He lives in Denton, too, and he's, like, a real person we found. The, we've started to, like, try to branch out just to get better quality recordings because we can only yeah. do so much ourselves. <laughs> we're only so experienced so we found someone like in our own town who's like 10 minutes away we can just go to his house all the time and he knows our whole vibe and we're just really comfortable working with and just letting it loose and it sounds awesome <laughs> what kind of uh what kind of pedals are you are you rocking with on the on the lead guitars uh just mainly just delay and fuzz yeah like, yeah just well, pretty well, simple everyone, <laughs> Reverb. Everyone's got reverb on their amps. We put that on. Got to all get nice and. And then we all have reverb pedals. And we all have yes. reverb pedals. <laughs> yeah. In case we need more. Uh, and then we all got a fuzz pedal of some kind. Um, and then a delay. Here and there. Yeah, Lucas and I both rock phase. He and I both have, have small stone. Yeah. Uh, and he's got a wah. He's the one who handles all our wah. I'm, I'm the wah. <laughs> he's nice. a wah man. Nice. <laughs> and I noticed you had Other more. Than I guess, tremolo. Tremolo. Tremolo Keep it pretty simple. Keep we keep it tremolo. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you do. <laughs> I noticed that uh, it wasn't always uh, full drums either on there. Like, uh, was that some Congo or some Cajon I, I detected in there? Oh, it's yeah, bongo. bongos usually. Bongos. Yeah, bongos. Bongos are my favorite sport. I love them. Yeah, oh, that's <laughs> I you. Wanna get congos. Is that you rocking those bad boys? Yeah, yeah. most of the times me rocking them. But we've got um. Especially, we've got a record coming up now that we're starting to try to strip down things and do so, like songs like that Brian Jones sound record. Thank God for mental illness has no drums, and we were like kind of inspired by that. So it's got drums, but it's all stripped down. <laughs> so it's got drums. It's got drums on like half of it, but some songs there's no drums, just percussion and stuff. And like Killer on the Moon it was the first song on it because i'm a drummer so i'm like that's always like the first thing i think of yeah but i mean i don't know it's kind of cool to start stripping back because you don't always need sometimes it can be overpowering on song if you want to make it yeah from the heart yeah yeah it was nice man i liked it because it wasn't i, I like that your you, music is not uniform but it's always that that groove you know like you get in that groove and uh you don't fall out of it it's it's very yeah. consistent <laughs> But it's not or it's not uniform in any way. You I gotta love be it. the one. You gotta, you gotta be, be the, the one. one. You can't be big and small at the same time. You gotta be the one. <laughs> Have you done any touring? James Brown told us that. Oh, James Brown said that, huh? Not no, not really. touring. We've done. That's what we're hoping to do this summer and finally get on the road for like go. We really want to get on the West Coast because for a band like us. We feel like all these Texas, us Texas bands got to go to California, and all the California bands got to come to Texas play for each other. So we really want to yeah. go out there and play some shows on the West Coast this summer. But we have been starting to get out of town around Texas a lot. We've been going out to Austin pretty regularly, and people seem we we have a fucking great yeah. time down there. Yeah. Like, um, it, they all treat us really well down there. We've been to San Antonio. Uh, been to Oklahoma. Oklahoma was awful both times. Actually, <laughs> Oklahoma was a terrible place. I don't. I don't, I don't <laughs> hopefully, it can be better. But so far, Oklahoma. Uh, 
But yeah, we play because being in the DFW community, we have like three different towns each, like 45 minutes. We got Dallas, Fort Worth, and Denton, each with their own music scene and people. But we all know each other, so it's really easy to play a lot around this different, like, kind of big area uh, around. So that's what we do a lot of. And now we're getting down to Austin. We got to go to Houston now. Yeah. We're just trying to, we're to play anywhere we can, really. New Orleans. Get on over to New Orleans. Book a show there, man. You guys have a great time. <laughs> we should. We'll tell Victor to book a show, us a show there. Fuck yeah. Um, all right, okay, so are you familiar with some of um, the newer... And I'm, I'm speaking of one band in particular. I saw this band when I was 18 years old. And oh, yeah. when I... When I showed up, I was blown away by the talent in the band. But then they had somebody dressed up like a fairy. And they came out with little tiny shot glasses. Little tiny, like, paper cups. They weren't shot glasses. They were little tiny paper. Like, like cups? No, like the little... You put ketchup in. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? And it was just a little tiny bit of clear, yeah. clear liquid. Now, I don't know if this was, like, shots. Because I think it was, like, New Year's Eve or something on 6th Street in Austin. And uh, but they they handed yeah. all the cups out to everybody and they said, everybody, hold your cups up. And they said, let's take acid together and then dumped it. And I mean, I was like, what oh, the fuck yeah. is everybody on acid right now? And I started to look around and there were people like dancing with like the, the cable holding up the tent, you know, and like uh, yes. people were dressed in full like, uh, you know, elven attire. And uh, but the band was Spoonfed Tribe. Have you ever heard of them? They're from the DFW area. Oh, so, uh, Spoonfed Tribe is that who you said? Yeah. Cut out a little bit. Yeah, Spoonfed Tribe. I don't know their music, but I've I had a, I've had friends tell me about them. But now I want to. Yeah. <laughs> they are they are in your neck of the woods, you guys, and they, they're phenomenal. We had, a, we had a kind of similar experience like that in Austin. Actually, our first Austin show yeah. ever. It's like a secret Close. speakeasy, which you know, like we went in a room which everyone thought was the bathroom, but it was like a hallway in another bar. And we went in there after we played, and it was lit as fuck in there. There was yeah. everybody was All dancing. There was a rave. Gloves. They had the light up gloves yeah. for DJ. And some guys told us, yeah, everyone's on mushrooms in here, man. You see these? <laughs> and, and they came up and they gave us all a, a little cup of mushroom chocolate. Like, hey, you guys from, from out of town? Like, yeah, you're from out of town. Oh, here, Y'all play tonight? Man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so uh, we, uh, when we were on mushrooms in Austin, then we had to go find our bass player, Skinny. Uh, so we wrote, we got lost on the corner of 22nd and Nature Street, and that's where we wrote a song about... Oh, we're just on Higher Than the Beatles. <laughs> right, every time we're in Austin, we play a song, we're like, the song's about here. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <clears throat> yeah, that could be very disorienting being on any sort of psychedelics in Austin. I have I know from yeah. personal experience. Yeah, well, that's a good night. I don't know. It was, it was <clears throat> the frequency was high, though. It was all right. That's good. You know, you guys, <clears throat> you're young. You, you have Uber and Lyft and all that shit. It's it's so hard to confront a cab driver though, like. Yeah, we, we had Ian. Yeah, so, we had our bassist Ian, who was very scared that a van was different from a car and that he couldn't drive it. We're like, no, you got it. It's okay. You have a driver's license. Like, you can do it. It's a pedal and a wheel, man. We're just going to Uncle Donnie's house, man. It's no problem. <laughs> but, man, that's such a great experience. So you got some new music coming out. We covered that. You're 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 uh, hoping to plan a tour. So if anybody's listening right now and want to take these guys on the road, they sound like a lot of fun. And I think from from this conversation, I'll give them uh, you know like out of five stars, I'll give them like four point three as far as like they're they're it's like super super serious about it and won't fuck shit up. There's like a <laughs> that slight slight percentage that they'll take mushrooms and forget where the gig is. But you know, I feel like they got a handle on it. They 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 passed the test. So uh, <laughs> we're, we're, we're rock and roll people. Uh, but yeah, let's uh, let's wrap this up, you guys. I got one more one more question for you. Uh, you all can right. all answer. What sort of bad habits do you have right now that you're trying to quit? Oh, us oh. as a band. Ooh. As we, a band or like we individually? Know. You, however you want to answer that. That's, that's well, up to you guys. First of all, we, need to, uh, we, we forget things at gigs a lot. Yeah, yeah. that's one really bad. Where sometimes <laughs> we'll be like, oh, oh shit, we forgot a guitar or 
don't know the name of it off that. But that also results from us always having to take multiple cars. We got a minivan now. So we got a we got a space so odyssey. Oh that'd be I don't know, uh, we gotta get. Oh, uh, fuck it. We, we spend too much money on strings, too. Spend, we break too many strings. We gotta, we gotta get started being serious. I don't know. Maybe that's Maybe smoke a few, two less cigarettes. Yeah, cigarettes, yeah, cigarettes definitely. Come on, uh, I don't know what else. I feel like I'm back in like two, three days, man. Yeah, that's, that's better than a lot of people. Yeah, that's true. But, I don't know, I'm, I'm Maybe I should start. I get my study plan. Maybe more you should start procrastinating. I should start procrastinating. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm always going to rehearsal, and I'm like, I'll do my homework tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, also a big thing. I gotta slow down. I'm a oh. rush. I'm a natural rusher, so I always oh. gotta be wary. That's number one. Okay. I just gotta make sure to lean back on the groove and stay in the pocket. <laughs> yep. Okay. Be the one. Be the <laughs> one. <laughs> All right, you guys, it has been a pleasure talking to you. Uh, thanks so much for taking the time. It was a lot of fun. Thank you very much yeah, for wanting to talk to us. It yeah. means the world to us. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm always out there cruising for music, man. So if you guys have any bands you want to recommend to me, I'll go look them up and try to get them on here as well. We'll, we'll keep this little community thriving. Oh, you know? hey, Cowboy. Hey, Cowboy. Uh, uh, that's that's really uh, yeah, we'll give you some Denton music. If there's, if there's any two bands in Denton, Texas, our hometown, doing it right, it's Pearl Earl. Our best friend band, we call each other. They, I, I think they call us that. I don't care. We're going <laughs> to call them our best friends. And then Hey Cowboy, our very new outfit. And holy shit, they're, they're amazing. Really yeah, they, they, and the very original stuff I like with it. They're called Hank Cowboy? Hey! Hey! hey cowboy. Oh, hey, Cowboy. All right. All right. Cowboy. Awesome. Well, I will be sure to look them up. And uh, if I can talk to them, uh, you know, I'll, I'll tell them you guys... Um, you know, consider them family and stop talking shit about you if they do. So <laughs> if it comes up, if it comes up. Right. <laughs> Thanks, man. All right, you guys have a great night. Later. Hey, you too, Take care Take you. Thank you. <laughs> All right, that's gonna wrap it up for that. Okay, now the moment you've all been waiting for. What's gonna happen? What's what's the big announcement? Is the show getting canceled? Yeah, the show's getting canceled, you guys. No, it's not, because it's never going to get canceled. Just getting started. It's a sick joke, really is. What is really happening, though, is there's been a, a big, huge demand for more metal. There's The metalheads out there are serious, and hip-hop, too, which I'm going to get to, but... Um, you know how for are you guys familiar with like pop culture and you know things that are said a lot? Are you familiar with March Madness? Well, I decided I'd please our metalheads. I decided I would dedicate March to the art of metal. We're gonna call it March Mad Metalness. And we have some really special guests. I have David Fitzgerald from San Antonio death metal band destroyer of the worlds he's going to be doing some co-hosting with me as well as william anderwald the guitarist for whiskey ignition who we featured back in episode six and uh, a, fr a friend of mine dave who's also he's just a metal fanatic uh Bo maddox you guys remember him from the collateral cinema podcast and he's a co-host here so we've got some really special people coming in to help with march mad metalness and we're going to take it very seriously we're actually going to teach you guys where metal came from and we've got every episode we're going to have a uh, metal fact hopefully you learn something every time and hopefully you really enjoy of the hundreds of bands that we listen to literally hundreds of hundreds of bands that Stacy and I have listened to six have been selected so congratulations to the six that are I hope that we do you well here hope that we do you nice and hard and um, I hope that you do you nice and hard as well I hope that it's mutual doing of the hard 
and I hope that our fans will stick around through that month. Even if you're not a metal fan, maybe you uh, will be surprised at what you think you don't like that you do. And that goes for also uh, hip-hop. We're going to be putting a little bit of hip-hop, actually a lot more hip-hop, on the show starting April. And uh, we're going to kick that off the 420 week. And our buddy MT has just put out an album. It's called Cadence Waves. You can find it everywhere. Cadence Waves by MT. Look up MT the Realist. He was actually our uh, very first guest on the podcast. So if you want to go back and hear us being way more goofy and way more uh, just, I don't know. We were figuring it out back then. And it's I think it's, it's gotten better. So you should let us know. But we're going to close this off with another track. So you guys just take care of one another and, you know, just remember that it's your responsibility to bring love into the world. And and that's probably all you're going to take out with you, right? Who knows? Who knows? I just want you guys to, to be good to one another and... Follow the golden rule.